Welcome to our lecture online. So let's talk a little bit about the launch window and try and understand that a little bit more. We already know that if you're going to send a spacecraft to Mars, you can only do so every two years and a month or two years and two months. The launch, the launch windows are about that long apart. Here I have the indication it's about 780 days, which is two years and 50 days. It's about almost two months added to two years. And every two years and two months or so, you can launch a spacecraft to Mars because that's when the Earth and Mars are just perfectly aligned. But that launch window has a certain period. In this case, there's an example here that we have a 21-day period along which we can send something to Mars. Now, we have what we call our primary launch window and our secondary launch window. As we wait longer and longer during that launch window, we, use, we lose less opportunity to send a spacecraft to Mars with the least amount of energy required. The longer we wait, the more energy that it takes because Mars continues to move along its path and to get to Mars, we may have to go a little bit higher than we wanted to if we launched a little bit sooner. Again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the point where Mars and Earth are as close as possible to each other, at least the orbits are, because by the time the spacecraft get there, the, the, our Mars will be as close as possible to Earth's orbit. And the farther it is, the more energy it takes because the higher we need to go, the more potential energy we need to gain to get farther away from the Earth. Also notice that on each day, so typically during that 21 day period, we'll have two times during the day in which a spacecraft can be launched. And that is because the orientation of the ecliptic and where the spacecraft wants to go. So for example, if Mars is close to the ecliptic, you want to send the spacecraft in orbit when you're pointing in the same direction as the ecliptic, which is the same direction of where you're going to find Mars. Notice that the Earth has an actual tilt of 23 and a half degrees. So from a point, let's say in Florida, when you, wait, when you do it at this point during the day, you'll be at this position. But since the Earth turns, notice that the Earth will then turn below the ecliptic on the other side, and you'll be over here. So as the Earth is spinning on its axis, depending upon where you are, you're going to be above or below the ecliptic. So you, you're going to have two moments in time, some distance apart, where you can send the spacecraft in orbit and you'll be perfectly aligned. And that's why in each day during the window, you have two times in which you can send it. Now, as the time progresses, as the day progresses through the launch window, notice that that time changes. You need to send it a little bit earlier each time because the position where you're going to be on the Earth versus the ecliptic and where the Earth is in position around the Sun and where Mars is, is going to shift things a little bit so you have to, to launch at a slightly different time to make it just right so you rendezvous with Mars at the right location at the right time. So you can see that the times tend to shift. And also what you'll find is that the time difference between the two launch periods will vary from day to day, again, depending upon how you are oriented in the location that you are. Now, these numbers, for example, these times that were given as an example are for one location, one launch location. At a different launch location of the Earth, of course, all those numbers will be different and they need to be calculated. Now they use computers for that, of course, so that you can send a spacecraft at that exact moment in time. So when they do a countdown, they will count down so that when you hit zero, you'll be exactly at that time, at that particular location. If you were to miss it that way, you want to reset your, your starting timer, so to speak, and then you'll shoot for the next opportunity, which could be like 30 or 60 minutes later. But if you miss that window, if you can't figure out what went wrong, because sometimes you need to stop the count, you don't know what went wrong, then you have to wait till the next day or several days later until that next launch window opens up again. It's a specific moment in time that you want to do the launching. If the weather is bad, you don't want to launch, you don't want to risk losing your spacecraft, so then you wait for the next opportunity. Of course, eventually, you'll run out of time, and if you can't make it through the, in that launch window, you'll just have to wait another two years and 50 days before you can start again. So that's how that works. The ideal primary launch window is about 10 to 12 days long. The same for the secondary. It varies a little bit from, here, from, from, from launch window to launch window, but you can see that. You want to make sure that everything is ready, ready for the launch. And that's why when they built spacecraft to go places, those launch windows cannot be moved. You got to make it on time. So either you make this launch window or you wait another two and some years before you can try again. So that does add a little pressure to getting everything ready 
to make sure that rocket is ready to go when the launch window opens up. And that is what we mean by the launch window to send spacecraft, not just to Mars, but anywhere you like.